The National Social Register is a comprehensive database that many Nigerians want to know so much about. Well, you are lucky as this episode of Service to Humanity aims to shed light on this topical issue and answers most of your questions, if not all. In addition to this and in relation to it, we shall take details of the inaugural ministerial dialogue on use of the National Social Register of Poor and Vulnerable Households organized by the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development. What were some of the issues raised? Find out in the course of the program. My name is Habiba Zoksok, welcoming you to this episode of Service to Humanity. I'll be right back after this short break. Across the six geopolitical zones. To use this money uh, for what it is meant for, especially to take care of their family. In 36 states and the FCT. <laughs> over 6.4 million of Nigerians' poorest of the poor in about 1.3 million households receive conditional cash transfers of 5,000 Naira monthly under the Household Obligement Program of the Federal Government. Their joy knows no bound. The government well because they well. It's me to do any other thing my family. Reducing absolute poverty, promoting shared prosperity through the Conditional Cash Transfer Initiative. The Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development in service to humanity. Before we go into details of the major stories we have lined up for you, Let's take a summary of news events from the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs. Stay tuned. The Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development has flagged off the training of independent monitors across the various states of the Federation. The training is to equip the independent monitors to monitor the implementation of the National Social Investment Programs, which comprises of NPAR, Government Enterprises, and Empowerment Program, JEEP, National Homegrown School Feeding Program, and the Conditional Cash Transfer Program, CCT, Kaduna, being one of the venues for the training sessions. 198 independent monitors from across different local government of Kaduna State were trained. In their locality, in schools. The minister, who was represented by her special assistant on legal matters, Hajiami Muna Idris, stated that the aim of the training was to ensure proper implementation of the federal government's NSIP programs to see that they deliver on its aim of lifting Nigerians out of poverty and expanding social inclusion safety nets to include more people in the rural areas. She therefore urged the independent monitors to discharge their duties with diligence and accountability, stressing that anyone found wanting would be taken off the program. You will be closely supervised by officials of the ministry and your activities will also be monitored by the ministry and other stakeholders at the state level. It is therefore my expectation that you carry out this responsibility with utmost diligence and sincerity. Also speaking at the event, the State Director National Orientation Agency, Galadima Zuberu, stressed that the monitors should perform their duties with sincerity as it is their core mandate to render good service to humanity. Where there are policy hitches or challenges, recommendations should be made on how to fine-tune them so as to achieve the lofty ideals of this noble program. I therefore call on all the monitors to please be diligent and patriotic and do the right thing without prompting so that Nigeria and Nigerians will be the better for it. The Kaduna State Focal Person for the National Social Investment Programs, Amina Saude Atoyebi, called on the monitors to ensure successful implementation of the NSIP program. So I just, I just want to encourage everyone, put your hearts and souls into the work do what is required so that in your own little way you are contributing to doing something great the minister of humanitarian affairs disaster management and social development sadia umar farouk has condemned the attacks by insurgents on residents of borno state 
In a statement released by the ministry, Sadia Umar Farouk described the action by the insurgents as not only being wicked and inhuman, but also insensitive. She said the ministry through its agency, the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, is already working with State Emergency Management Agency, SEMA, to provide relief and non-relief items. She sympathized with the state government and victims, especially those who lost their lives in the attack. Glad to know you're still with me on the program Service to Humanity. According to news reports, there are nearly 27 million Nigerians enrolled into the National Social Register. This throws up a lot of questions on the who, when and how this register was arrived at. We had an interview with the National Coordinator of the National Social Safety Net Coordinating Committee, Mr. Apera Yoa, who answered this and other questions. Let's take extracts from that interview. Keep watching. Nigeria is the most populated African country with about 200 million people. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, an estimated 40.2% of the population or an equivalent of 82 million live below poverty line on less than $1.90 per day. It has also been predicted that another 10 million Nigerians are expected to slide below the poverty line as a result of the socio-economic impact of COVID-19 by the end of 2021. Against this background, the pledge of President Muhammad Buhari to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in 10 years has become more pertinent, even as the government through its various social safety nets and intervention programs continue to demonstrate total focus and commitment to doing so. In carrying out these programs targeted at the poor and vulnerable, the National Social Register for the poor and vulnerable has become a reference point as Nigerians continue to ponder at how and when such a register came about. Mr. Apra Yowa is the National Coordinator of the National Social Safety Net Coordinating Office, NASCO. He speaks on the essence of the social register. You recall that when the president uh, came on board, his administration, he declared his administration was people focused. He had uh, promised that he would give uh, st cash stipends to the poor. And so when he came in, he designed um, a suite of programs uh, to answer his campaign promise, but also to begin to start developing for Nigeria some structures and systems uh, to help us uh, in the in our quest to eradicate and reduce poverty in Nigeria. So social register then became a necessary tool, a necessary tool to develop as one of those structures. In the we, we in the past we had uh, poverty alleviation, poverty eradication programs and initiative of government where help was identified here and pushed down to the states and to the communities. This time the government is saying I want to be more deliberate in terms of my approach uh, to tackling poverty. Why I am trying to uh, initiate programs that will answer that challenge, I also want to set up frameworks and systems that will ensure its sustainability. And so the social register was then established. Mr. Apra also sheds light on the social safety net programs of the Buhari administration and why they are necessary. So we know that those who are poor and or vulnerable are made so out of um, some gaps. They, some are made poor because there has some, been some issues or um, crisis uh, like the or like the insurgents in the northeast of the country. These people are displaced. They are denied their daily uh, income sources. They become vulnerable, their NID becomes or they are, they've relocated and they don't have anything. So safety nets programs help such individuals uh, provide some form of livelihood support uh, to them to enable them back uh, bounce back uh, on their feet. The question of how this register was created is one that many Nigerians have pondered about. As Mr. Afra puts it, a bottom-up approach using community institutions has been adapted ensuring the integrity of the document. 
the social register uses the bottom-up approach. Here it means that it's the people in the communities that determine those who are poor and vulnerable amongst them. So it is not a politician giving any name, it's not the president, it's not the governor, it's not a councillor, it's nobody. Nobody writes anyone's name in the register. What happens for the social register is the community will sit together. They will define what poverty means in the context of that community. And you know that Nigeria is very dynamic. What holds, or, uh, uh, holds in one community will be different, as close as the next door. And so the community will gather together and say, for us in our community, this is what we consider as poverty. And by this, this, are, this is who and who it's poor. To ensure gender balance, equity, and fairness, the community is divided into three homogeneous groups. One group is for the male, one for the women, one for the youth. Ensuring that women have a voice in the selection of the poor people in their village. Ensuring that the youth also have a voice and it's not only a men affair. So all these three groups will define what poverty is to them within the context of the community. Then they will go ahead and identify those households that they consider poor and vulnerable by their definition. They will then bring them all in together into plenary and the list will be harmonized. Once that harmonized list is agreed, the community will select one female and one male who will be their representative and then these two people will sign off on this list. One copy is kept with the community, one copy is taken by the local government team. As soon as they come back to the office, they make a copy, they send a copy to the state office which is domiciled in the Ministry of Planning, supervised by the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Planning. Then the, another copy is then given to the enumerators who go back to this same village and then register the people onto the social register. The National Social Safety Nets Coordinating Office has a mandate of providing the needed technical service for the actualization and implementation of National Social Register. Its task is huge and its scope is wide. Mr. Apra speaks on what keeps his office committed to the task at hand. We are first inspired by the act of doing good and providing structure, systems, and support that helps the poor and vulnerable on a personal note. But we are also motivated by the desire, the strong desire by our ministry and our minister and the hunger she has in alleviating the sufferings of Nigerians. We are inspired by our president who has declared for the first time that I want to pull 100 million people out of poverty in 10 years. This is a clear intent with timeline and a mandate. And our minister, Selma Farouk, has taken this very personally. So we see her energy and her drive and that keeps us going. Regardless of the challenges and the issues thereof, we are inspired by her sterling leadership and her hunger in trying to carry out Mr. President's mandate and doing good to our people and lifting our people out of poverty. On the commitment of government to walk the talk in lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty, as well as setting up frameworks that addresses major issues in the poverty discourse, Mr. Afra says Nigerians can be confident that this government is doing the best possible. Against the background of our discussion with Mr. Apera Yowa, we will now move on to take the details of the inaugural annual ministerial dialogue on the use of the National Social Register to fight poverty and other social problems. Four ministries were present at this event, which took place in February 2021. Let's get the details. The inaugural ministerial dialogue was held to socialize the National Social Register, discuss its availability, and use as a veritable tool for social development initiatives across various levels of government. The information in the database is available to core ministries, departments, and agencies and indeed donor and partner agencies who are working to deliver humanitarian and social protection programs in Nigeria as a fight to reduce poverty in the country. So this 
The Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Umar Farooq, while giving the keynote address, stated that the reason for the conversation was poverty and how the present administration has prioritized lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in 10 years, a task for which the National Social Register was very central to. Social Register serves both a social policy role as inclusion system and an operational role as information system. They provide a gateway for potential inclusion of intended populations into social programs while reducing private and public transaction costs by simplifying certain steps such as identification and registration of people eligible for social assistance. They also enable better coordination across programs more efficient delivery and better shock response. Sadia Umar Farooq highlighted the levels of information contained in the social register as an invaluable resource in social intervention programs being undertaken by MDAs and other partners as they war against poverty. The information also allows for tracking of coverage, data updates, number and types of programs served or benefited. We also have information on community profiles guided, community asset assessment, such as social amenities, available infrastructure, accessibility to roads, electricity, schools, hospitals, cleaning, banking information, etc. These are all valuable information for deeper understanding of poverty dynamics in each community. Earlier in the dialogue, National Coordinator of the National Social Safety Net Coordinating Office, Mr. Akpera Yoa, gave a background to the why, where and how the National Social Register can be used to target the poor and vulnerable in Nigeria. The Social Register is a tool to identify and register the poor, vulnerable and their socioeconomic profile to inform proper policies and manage social programs in an integral way. It is an information gateway of potential eligible beneficiaries into any social, in any social intervention program. Ministers present at the dialogue included the Minister of Youths and Sports, Sunday Dari, Women Affairs, Dame Pauline Talon, and State Minister of Education, Emeka Wajuba, the Director General of NIMSI, Engineer Aliu Abubakar Aziz, represented the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy. In their various comments, they all lauded the work of the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development in coming up with the National Social Register while acknowledging that it would be of immense use in designing interventionist programs. Uh, the greatest beneficiary of course are the Nigerian people, the poor and the vulnerable. But as I sat there and I listened, I realized that the youth might be the greatest beneficiary of the effort. Because when you look at all the demographics, the poor, the unemployed, the those are internally displaced, you find a large percentage of our youth. The uh, president is very passionate about the poor, the vulnerable, particularly those in the rural areas. Virtual contributions to the dialogue were taken from international partners, donor agencies, as well as from the Minister of Labor and Productivity. Initially, for some of us who have been in the uh, social investment program uh, from uh, 2015 or 16 to 2019, we were not very sure whether we had a register or not. So today, uh, the chicken are coming to roost. It is a very big reality, and I'm very, very, very happy about that. The National Social Register has coverage across all 36 states and the FCT. Its data is currently being used by the European Union funding stream for some of its humanitarian and social intervention programs. Some states like Kaduna, Anambra and Lagos have also directed all their ministries to mine the NSR database for their pro-poor interventions. Service to Humanity continues with one of the recent efforts of Mr. President as we take highlights from Lagos and Ogun states 
where the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs flagged off the cash grant to rural women for the purpose of boosting their businesses. Let's take that story. Colorful and festive, like a wedding reception or party with the women in various Ashobi, that is the way the women in Lagos turn out at the flag off of the federal government cash grant to rural women in the state. Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development was represented by the Permanent Secretary Bashir Noura al Kali. While delivering the Minister's address, the Permanent Secretary reiterated the federal government's commitment to reducing the plight of the poor and most vulnerable in the country. A decision which has seen to the expansion of the social intervention programs and the cash grant for rural women. This program is designed to provide a one-off grant to some of the poorest and most vulnerable women in rural and peri-urban areas of the country. A cash grant of 20,000 will be dispersed across the country to about 125,000 women. The Permanent Secretary expressed the hope that beneficiaries will make good use of the grant to generally contribute towards improving their living standards. Governor of Lagos State, Babajide Samuolu, was represented by the Deputy Governor, Dr. Kaudiri Obafemi Hamza. He expressed the readiness of Lagos State to identify and collaborate with the federal government on the special grant for rural women in the state. He added that the national social intervention programs are making the desired impact with beneficiaries becoming independent by the day. I will therefore appeal to the beneficiary of this special grant not to see this as just a share of the so-called national aid, but to deploy the fund as a seed to boost their trade and businesses for greater income. The grant should be judicially utilized for good returns on investment, as this is the main vision behind this initiative. The distribution was flagged off by the Deputy Governor and the representative of the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs with support from other dignitaries present. Over 8,000 women across all the local government areas of Lagos State benefited from the cash grant of 20,000 Naira each from the federal government through the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development. In nearby Ogun State, the Deputy Governor danced to the singing of women as they expressed their joy at being part of beneficiaries for the federal government cash grant to rural women. The flag off of the 20,000 Naira cash distribution held at the government house. Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Bashir Nur Al Ali, who represented the minister, said that poverty reduction has become a major objective of the government all over the world. This, he said, was what initiated the creation of the National Social Investment Program, NSIP, from which over 12 million households have benefited in the past five years. The Permanent Secretary added that the cash grant to rural women in Ogun State was to help some of the poorest and most vulnerable mitigate the impact of COVID-19 on their businesses. He employed the women to use the money in any small business they deem fit. Her Excellency, our target in Ogun State is to disperse to over 3,500 beneficiaries across all the local government. We believe, Your Excellency, with the complementary effort of the state government, the targeted beneficiaries will be adequately covered within the next few days. The Governor of Ogun State, who was represented by the Deputy Governor, Engineer Noimot Salako Oyedele, appreciated the federal government and the ministry for the initiative and impacting in the lives of 3,500 rural women in the state. She encouraged the women to make good use of the money disbursed. And I want you to let the Honorable Minister and his team know that Ogun State is a law-abiding state. Ogun State is a law of people who have 
is a state. People who act in their own is a state that we are proud of and we want them to see the whole standard and all of us. The distribution was flagged off by the Deputy Governor and the Permanent Secretary, Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development. <laughs> That ends this edition of Service to Humanity. You will agree with me that it has been an educative as well as enlightening half hour. Special thanks to the media team of the ministry for making it possible. Join me again same time next week for a fresh package. Until I come your way again, stay safe. Enjoy the rest of your evening.